Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the trendy tote bag. This actually came in as a viewer request. I'm kind of looking at the request coming in lately and this one was uh, asked of me to do. I looked at it and I thought this is a great learning opportunity. It's got some marling and it's also a practical bag and I haven't done a bag in a while. So today we're gonna get involved with this one here. It's called marling. So we're gonna put two yarns together, pretend that they're one and it's actually a really straightforward pattern in order to be able to follow. So without further ado, let's just uh, go through the concept of mar uh, marling really quickly and then I will show you how to do this pattern. So marling basically is taking two strands and pretending that they're one. So when it comes from the yarn ball, it's just uh, there's two yarn balls. So there's one strand. So if you want solid um, colors in a thicker yarn, then both of the yarn balls should be the same color. If you're doing smaller projects, you may wanna consider just taking the tail from the outside of the ball and the tail from the inside of the ball and you can use both strands at the same time. It's a little more difficult to do but that's possible. So when you're marling, you're just treating it like it's one. So just keeping it together. I'm not worried about the order in which they appear because it's gonna be random. So you just treat it like it's one big yarn strand. So it's like a chunky weight yarn. So you can just pretend that they're together and they will kind of just work its way out in the pattern just like this. So this is called marling and marling is really fun with uh, Karen Cotton Cakes or Bernat Pop when both of the yarn strands are gonna change colors uh, randomly within itself and so you can end up with a really neat effect. So we have a marled basket um, if you wanna take a look at that on YouTube. So that's kind of our goal today is to use two strands. Now when you marl when you start to pull things out if you have to it gets kind of inconvenient to do that. So make sure that you are crocheting with a purpose and etc. So today we have a bag that's going to be changing color and not only marling but also marling within color too. So here's the panel of the bag. It looks really busy when it's marled like this but that's the whole point of this. So if it gets dirtier or etc. it's not as easy to tell. So that's probably an advantage to marling. So what we have here is that we have two colors being used at the same time as one and then when you have these stripes one of the colors is taken out and replaced with the white. Okay and then you're gonna do two rows. So what you're looking at is four rows, two rows, four rows, two rows, four rows, two rows and then the final is six rows. So it's a really quick and easy pattern to be able to maintain. What I also did find out within this is that I realized that I don't have to trim the yarn every time I'm gonna change it to do these stripes. So the one color, this um, lighter green color, I just left off to the side and when I was ready to use it again I picked it up because this here has a border so that carrying string can be hidden underneath there which it is. So what you wanna do is just do two of these. Then the bag handle itself is just regular single crochet going across but just kinda keeping with the marling effect and then there's also a flap that you can use that you can put a button on it in order to seal it. If you don't want a flap then obviously don't do that but we will cover that today. So let's just get yourself started within this pattern and I will show you how it's done and it's really easy and then I will show you the technique of carrying yarn too. So using two strands together as one, just keep a little bit of a longer tail so you can hide that in. Just create a slip knot to begin. This is considered an easy level. I would consider that also an easy level after completing all the panel work. So you wanna chain only 36. So just pretend like there's only one strand in your hand. So one, two, three, four, and five. And go all the way to 36 for me and then meet me back here in just a moment. I'm just gonna do a small swatch with you here. So it's just a smaller example. So once you have your 36 done, then what you wanna do is double crochet third chain from the hook. I'm going to recommend to you that you use the back hump of that chain. So turn it over and get the back hump. So go into the third one. So one, two, and three and turn it over and get the back hump and I want you to double crochet within the third chain. It's gonna be a little bit tight um, the first time through so if you're struggling a bit, that's okay. You're joining the rest of us in our struggles. So you, once you get the first double crochet in, go to the next chain and double crochet. So double crochet in each of the chains all the way back to the very beginning. So now that I've gone all the way across with my double crochet, the next row, row number two is the same thing throughout this whole thing. The only difference is that you're just gonna keep an eye on the color. So this is one of four for this particular color before we turn into that stripe. So turning our work, each one of these rows are going to be the same now going forward. So you're just gonna chain one and you're going to apply a single crochet into the first stitch. 
you're then going to skip the next stitch and do a double crochet first and then in the same stitch you're going to do a single crochet. I've never done that before so that was new for me. That's one of my appeals to this um, doing this video today. So skipping the next one. So start off with the double crochet so you can reach over and then polish it off with a, a single crochet and you're gonna do this all the way across just like that. So the very last stitch should be a single crochet that is part of the, the repeat that you have. Okay, so we're just continuing. So double and single and then in the last turning chain that's your last one. So reach over, go into your turning chain and then single crochet into that one. And that's how you're going to finish off each one of the rows. So we're gonna turn and work and begin the next row. So let's turn and work and begin row number three. So you're going to start off like I showed you. So you're just gonna do one single crochet. So always start off with that one single crochet by itself and then skipping the next one and just going to the next one and doing a double and a single in the same one and you'll do that all the way across. That's all this is my friends, this bag. The only difference is that we will have striping coming up after we complete the fourth row and I'll show you how to do that so you don't have to have all these tail ends hanging out at the end of your project. So just go all the way across doing this same technique and the very last stitch you should have just the double and the single. So it's only the first stitch that you have a single that's standing by itself. So turning your work and moving up. So just chain one, single, skipping one, and then double and single. So do this all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row and I'll show you how to change color but don't cut your colors please. So now coming up to the end. I've already done my double crochet but I still have a single. So just start your single just going in, pull through but don't finish it. What I want you to do with this new yarn to create a stripe and the stripe is only consisting of two rows. You're going to put that onto the hook and you're gonna keep one of the two colors. So if you want a, a pink and white stripe you can do that. If you want a white and blue you can do that. So let's do, let's leave the blue behind. I'm just making it up as I go in here. So you wanna just keep that pink and then take that new white with you and finish it so it's now ready. So let that blue just stay off to the side and now just operate now using the white and the pink in my case and then turn your work. So you're gonna do two rows of this. So you're just gonna chain up one, one single crochet and then just jumping over and just doing a double and a single. So just keep everything kind of organized behind the scenes here and just work your way across. So you already know what you're doing. The one here, see how it's kind of twisting? So I might want to just rotate the project a little bit to get that untwisted with that as well. So please go all the way across and I will see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming into the last stitch. So double and single and then turn. So you got one row of that and then you're gonna come back. So where you left that blue hanging off is on the other side. So when you get back there you'll be able to pick that back up. That's why you don't have to cut it. So starting the next row. So just a single and then skipping one and going uh, double and a single. So I'll see you at the end of this row I'll show you how to change it back and I would also keep this new color the white just carrying up on the side until you have to use it again and only cut it at the last at the end of the last striping that you will do on the, the bag panel. So I've now just come all the way to the end so just start the single crochet but don't finish it. Let the white fall out of the way. Just keep it for next time and then grab the blue and the pink and put them together and make sure that they're taut so they're relatively there's no um, it's not just hanging loosely and then you can ready to start this so you can just chain up one and start a new row. So what's gonna happen is that when you do the edging for this panel that's gonna appear underneath the border and this white one the next time you're ready to do the white again it, you'll just carry it up through the whole thing uh, on the side and then you'll get ready to uh, use it again. So what I need you to do is that I need you to do your whole paneling this way. So after the third stripe you can get rid of the, the whatever color that is making it look like a stripe at that point and then just carry up and the last six rows are going to be the same. So you essentially have four, two and then four, 
two, four, two, and then six. And you can see that within the pattern as well. So what I want you to do is finish up your uh, panels. They don't really take that long. At least they didn't for me. And I think that you would pretty much enjoy this pattern at the same time. Make sure that you are grabbing two strands at the same time. Sometimes it's possible just to accidentally grab one. Just make sure that you're keeping an eye on that as well. So I will leave this in your capable hands and the next part of the tutorial once you have the panel done what are you gonna do? You have the edging. So we have to do the edging and that's what we're gonna focus on. Next. So I left one panel to completely finish. So you can see how I dragged up my yarn along the side here. So when we do to when we go to do this border we wanna cover in all those strands that we carried up on the side. So we're just gonna finish up the last section here. So when I was doing this off camera I actually cut my yarn and I wasn't supposed to but I wanted to do both panels with the same ball so that's why that's cut. So I'm just gonna finish up to the last stitch and this is the sixth row that I have. Okay, so you can kinda see that. So what I wanna do is that I don't wanna turn my work and go along the top edge. I wanna just turn my work here 90 degrees and work down the side edge. So we're going to chain one and we have to get 24 stitches evenly spaced down the side. I did the other one without any problems at all. So just starting in the first section just start counting. So let's count the first side. So one and just evenly space it. Two, three, four, five, six. Take a look at the back and make sure that anything that is being carried is picked up. So I think this is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. And then nine. So go right up over those carrying ones. So nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. See it's not that hard. So just turning it I wanna make sure that I covered anything that was being carried. So all of these strands got buried in as they go so I can just safely just start trimming those down. Okay so we got that out and now we're just gonna turn up to the side. Okay, and now we just start in the very uh, top here. This is considered the bottom. So this is, uh, so it's just 32 stitches across. So starting and just going in. So you notice that I did not put in extra stitches for the corner. They don't want that. So at least the designer didn't say to do that. So we're not doing that. So you'll have a nice kind of rounded off uh, corner. So you're gonna single crochet yourself all the way across. You notice that I'm not counting along the base because the base is the same as the top and I, I can pretty much get that to be clear. So when I go up the other side here I want to have my 24 stitches and then I wanna turn and then just do the final top edge where we started and then finish off in the upper corner right here. So let's uh, continue to do that. So I need you to go all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming all the way back around to where it started. So I'm on the last stitch there here in the top and I'm gonna come in here and slip stitch. Done. So what I can do, if this is the first one, I want to be able to um, be able to fasten this off. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If this is the second one, you may wanna leave that yarn tail so long that you can just put it onto a tapestry needle and just being able to hide in the yarn tail or use that yarn tail in order to sew three sides together. So if this is the first one, you wanna fasten off as normal and you wanna take it and put it into your tapestry hook in order for you to secure it. The best way to secure it, especially when this is gonna be wearable, is to turn it to the back side and then just dragging it down into the stitch work on the back side. 
So go once. Don't change the shape of that corner by pulling it too tight. So once, twice, and three times. Just like that. And now you can trim it. So now we have to take the two panels and put them together as one. So when you're ready to do that, just uh, meet me back here and then we'll figure out what to do next. So let's put our two panels together. So what you're seeing here is where we finished off and you can see this is the right side and it's based on how I finished this single crochet. So I was crocheting it like this going around. So this is the right side. So I wanna take the second one that I did and I already have the edging done of that one and I'm looking to what is the right side and what is the wrong side. Okay, so I can see in the stitches this is how I finished. So what I want to do is match them up. So see here, okay, this is the one with the six. This is the top of the bag. So when I go to do this one, the six has to be there. So if this is the good side, the right side of where I finished, okay, this other one should be turned upside down so that the wrong side is facing up. So then it can be puzzled like this. Okay, and you'll see, and if you look at the bottom, you'll see that it makes sense. So just turn it over and make sure that you think that's right. So starting off in the one corner up at the top, I want you to use both of the yarn strands because then it's gonna be pretty much hidden in there and just take the yarn strand and create a slip knot. You wanna do that so that it can lock it into position. And now you're gonna take your tapestry needle and put the other side of that very long tail. So both of them are into the same needle. So starting off in the top corner, what I would recommend, go, in, go into a back loop. So if you go into both stitches at the same time, um, it, it'll be okay. But I'm thinking to go into the back loop of the one and then just stay in the back loop of the other. And what that will do is it'll create a nice seam line on your edge. And so you're gonna pull almost all the way through but you're gonna stop before you get to that slip knot that you created. Okay, make sure the strands are going through at the same time like the same spot. So what you wanna do is at that slip knot, throw your needle through it and lock it. Like that. So starting in the very next stitch, going into the back loop of this one and collecting the back loop of the other one. Leave this straggler down on top so that it gets stuck up underneath the stitch. And you wanna do about an inch or so of that. And you can always use a tapestry needle to hide it in. So moving to the next stitch back and back. And once you get this going, you'll be able to see it really quite quickly and just keep that straggler down on top. This is called whip stitching if I haven't already said that. So keep pulling things nice and tight and then keep moving around. So I want you to follow all of this for three sides only. If you do uh, four sides, you'll end up with a pillow if you don't, <laughs> but if you don't stuff it, then it's just a pad. So um, this is kind of a neat idea. So I wanna stop and leave the front or the top open so that the top of the bag has an open spot. So just work your way around, take your time and meet me back here and we'll move on in today's tutorial with something else. When you get all the way around, okay, so you're gonna leave the one open, everything else is sealed. You're just gonna take this and just do a tie right at the end. Okay, so just going in, creating a loop so it ties onto itself and then just kind of just fold it into the inside and take that yarn strand and just come into the inside of that bag. So go once and do a different path twice and then a third time is a charm. So it should never come out on you. And then you get rid of that strand and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to the handles. Handles are really quite easy and there is a striping effect on those too but it's just single crochet. So let's uh, get ready and put this aside and let's get ready for some straps. So here is one strap I have both of them actually already done and I wanna leave extra long tails so that I can sew this directly to the bag itself and their tails are happen to be on both sides just the way that we have it done. You will notice that there is a striping of just one of these okay just one stripe in here so we're gonna do what appears to be two rows and then the third row here is a stripe 
of the changing of color and then the fourth row is then going to finish. So let's begin to do the handles and let's start now. So you're just gonna create a slip knot again using the two yarns and you want to chain 61. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Go all the way to 61 and meet me back here in just a moment. Once you're ready to come back across you're gonna go second chain from the hook. Again stay on the back hump of the chain. It'll look nicer and you're going to single crochet yourself all the way across on the back hump. Okay so do that all the way across your strap and then meet me back here in just a moment. Just to remember this strap is much longer. I'm just doing a small swatch. So turning your work and doing row number two and we're gonna keep the same color. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches going across. And it's gonna be the third one, the third row where we're going to change those colors back and that's uh, to a different color to create that stripe. So go all the way across single crochet. This is row number two. So at the end of row number two again it will be much longer than this is that you're going to come into your very last one. So to reintroduce the other color just bring it back in. Leave it an extra long tail. You can use that for sewing. I don't know what I'm gonna need for sewing yet so that's why I'm kinda doing that and it's just a precaution so I don't waste my time. And I'm gonna bring these two colors through and so I'm gonna get rid of the white now. So the white's out. Just trim it. We deal with all these tails later and then grabbing the two colors you're going to finish it for row number four. So it looks like it's really kind of fan dangling in my hands right at the moment. That's because the swatch is so small but if it's a if it's a long strip like it should be it's not this it's not this concentrated on how much yarn tails that you have in one spot. So you can't get confused. Hopefully not. Okay so you're gonna go all the way across and this is your fourth and final row and then at the end of this row you're just gonna trim again keeping a long tail because you may need it and then you're just gonna finish off like that. So you'll have to do two straps like this and what we will do is that we will figure out where to position these on the bag so that we can sew it and then we can figure out what we need to get rid of for yarn tails and what is a nice clean then line. So you might wanna use the beginning and the ending here of to attach to your bag. So let's uh, move on. So now we want to attach this here to the bag. So it says about two inches in so I kinda use three fingers when I do that. So it's about two inches and I that's where I'm going to go. So I'm going to just put my finger there and that's where I'm going to join like that. So just making sure that when I go to do this is that I want to have it look like it's gonna fit. So once I have this and I think that I know it's gonna be good I'm just gonna take one of the yarn tails that we have and just pull it through and that will kind of lock it into position. So just kind of pull it through. So then it's kind of stable there. And that will hold it for me so I can see it. And then I'm going to then just do the other side the same way. Making sure that the strap is not turning in any weird way or it's got an extra flip to it. and attaching. And what I would do if I were you and you were me I would actually attach one bit, one side completely and then use that uh, when you turn it over use exactly where you positioned it and lay the other one over top of it so that you can actually have the same join on both sides. So now that you have that pulled through you can use the yarn tail that we had and we're gonna sew those directly to the top of the of the bag. So using the yarn tails from the just go through the top edge and through to the handle and whip stitch it into position. Um, be um, relatively tight. The nice thing about it is that you're using two different yarn strands so um, the strength is gonna be pretty good. I've always found good luck with bags is if you turn it over. So you just did across the front and just turn it over and just run 
some stitch work on the back side dragging through the same handle and therefore it's kind of like sewn on all on, 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 on all sides. So just coming in. If it's gliding in and out too easily you see me struggling a bit that's a good sign because that means it's nice and tight and that's exactly what we're looking for. And then once we get to the final here we want to tie it. So create that tie. And then we've been in and out a total of three times. If you want to tie it some more because you feel concerned there's nothing stopping you. Make sure you do weave it in and out on the back side of the strap so it's like on the inside. And then you're gonna repeat the same step for the other side of the strap and then just place the other strap, turn it over and then place the other strap and do the same thing. So starting on the other side just turn it over. You've already kind of marked it. Make sure that it makes sense and see it's a nice sturdy join. So just continue to do the same concept and I will see you back here in just a moment. Now that one side is done I can see that I'm gonna turn it over and get my other strap and noticing that the striping is in a certain way so when I put the next strap in I wanna make sure that that striping looks kind of the same that we have going on. Okay, so the striping matches each other and then making sure that this is nice and flat. I know exactly where to position this because I can see the one underneath it so it will match. So use that other strap as the matching point and when we come back I'll have this done and then we'll have to cover that little doohickey thing that uh, clamps it down. What's that called? A flap. So we'll do that next in just a moment. So get this last strap in. Okay, so now that I have my straps on really quite awesome I have to decide do I want to strap uh, closure or not. If not then you're done. Have a great day and if you want that we're gonna just quickly cover that and I'm not gonna show you how to put a button onto this thing but what you wanna do is attach it like you did here and then just fold it over and then get that positioning and then sew a button to there and you'll be able to have that button flap work. Let's begin to do the closure flap. That's what it's called and we're gonna be using the colors A and B which is the main color that you have. Again colors are subjective to you. So let's begin just create an extra long tail and you can use that and you'll notice that there's a striping effect on this thing um, on the strapping itself so we'll just wanna pay attention to that as well. And it's right at the end and if you notice where it's folding over on the bag you'll notice that that stripe matches where that falls too. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and go second chain from the hook we're just gonna do one single crochet in each. So it looks like this is just a single crochet strap that we have. If you wanna make it smaller or, or longer you can. It's up to you. Just make sure that you finish it off if you're going to do the button um, exactly the way you see it. I can't see you not uh, like doing a strap and not creating that buttonhole at the end. And we'll be doing that. So you're gonna have a total of six stitches. So rows number two all the way through ten is just one single crochet in each. So chain one and do one single in each and then meet me back here and we'll carry on in this and uh, yeah let's begin to do that next. So I'm finishing up row number ten and then row number 11 we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna create that buttonhole. So turn your work and do let, let's do number 11. We're going to chain one and we're gonna single crochet in the first two stitches. So one and two, chain two, skip the next two stitches and single crochet in the last thing. Oh my goodness how simple can that get? I know. So we're gonna be changing our yarn nail and we wanna change it back to the other colors that we were playing with in order to have this being consistent. So in my case I'm going for my bag I need to go to white and to this darker blue and that other color is kinda technically done. So when I go to put this on so get that ready get this darker blue only and pull through and row number 12 is that we are just gonna turn our work. So chain one. I have to grab both of those strands. 
a little bit fiddly, right? So chain one and then we're going to put in a single crochet in the first two. So one and two and then two single crochets in this chain two space. I know big shock. <laughs> okay and then one single crochet in the next two and then finally lucky row number 13. It says chain a turn. So chain one skip the first stitch. So skip that first one go to the second and single crochet in each of the next three. One, two, three and then it says to um, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the last stitch. That's it. So we wanna take care of our yarn tails at this time and get rid of those except for that very starting one that I had you keep that on. You wanna use that starting one just to be able to sew it. So any uh, tails that are hanging out now you want to get rid of those with the tapestry needle and do that at this time. So back to the bag we go with our new strapping and it's just gonna go on right there. So just kind of eye it up if you want to if you wanna measure if you're um, that concerned. That's a really nice way of saying if you're that particular. Okay so I'm just gonna go there and I'm just going to attach it to the top and like I did with the straps I would consider um, just going around doing the whip stitching on the front side like so and then when you get to the edge just turn it around and whip stitch on the opposite side and that, that will be nice and tight. So you want to find a button that will match the whole size and what we need to do is that we need to sew the button where it makes sense. So let's turn it over and let's just pretend that I sewed that in because I've already shown you how to do that. So as far as like coming off. So what you wanna do is that you wanna sew the button in a particular spot. So do you see how the striping matches? That's like not a miracle. So you wanna put your button right there. So you may want to put something there so that when you can see it you're just gonna sew. So that button has to get through that hole. So make sure if you're gonna try any buttons make sure you try it first and then sew it on and then you have a bag with the strap. And this is kind of a neat concept and I think that's pretty cool. So that's it for today and uh, hopefully you enjoy your new bag. And this is the Trendy Tote Bag by Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Have a fabulous day and we'll see you again obviously real soon. Bye bye.